Do we love Jesus? Yes. Come on, are you excited about Jesus? Come yeah. on. gave his life to Jesus a couple nights ago and uh, decided last night he wanted to get baptized. Jesus. And realized that this is not salvation. This is the next step in the whole process of it all of serving Jesus. Because he is sitting here an old man going to go down old man going to come up a new man. new man, new creation. Behold, all things have passed away and all things become new. Correct? Amen. Do you love Jesus? He said, yes, I do. That's good enough for me. What about you? Amen. Amen. It's the profession of faith that Jesus is Lord of our life, correct? Yes. And what we do is we welcome you into the kingdom of God, man. This is not the end. It's only the beginning. That's right. From here we go forward. It doesn't matter about our past. What matters is that today we go forward in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right, so. Jesus now. Right? Based off your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Jesus, love to Jesus. 
salvation in the blood of my Jesus. Yes, it is tonight. There's salvation. Jesus, the salvation in the blood of my Jesus, of my Jesus, and it still washes us. But see, there's power in the blood, there's power in the blood of my Jesus.
Do we ask you to fan the flames inside of us? Let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow in this place. Let the wind of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit of the living God, blow in this house. Let us fall, oh God, Holy Spirit.
I am he. I am he that turned the water into wine. I am he that departed the Red Sea. I am he that loves you with an everlasting love. I am he that calls you by your name. I am he that speaks to your heart. I am he that gives you understanding. I am he that gives you peace. I am he that loves you. I am he that loves you. I am he that loves you with an everlasting love. I speak peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's receive that as the word of the Lord tonight. Let it flood over you right now. Whatever you came in here needing, we receive it right now. Let the peace of God flood in this house right here. And not just a physical locale, but inside of you right here. Say, Spirit of God, I receive. Say, come on, say it with the Spirit of God, I receive. Spirit of God, I receive what you have for me right now. You need understanding from the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, it is he that gives unto us even right now. By the Spirit of God, let the peace of God come in this house. Turmoil and the things of dissension, let it grow off of you words that people spoke against you. Lies and deception and hatred and bitterness that's trying to grow. Come on, let it go right now and let the peace of the Lord Jesus rise up inside of you. We receive the peace that passes all understanding. The one that comforts our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, we receive it right now. The breath of the glory of God. The breath of the freshness of the Spirit of God be released in this place. Wind of heaven blow in this house. Father, we receive encouragement. We receive instruction. Father, we receive deliverance. Father, we receive even in, in ministry, we receive life. Newness of, of, of well springs. We uncap the wells of revival. Father, those things that are laying dormant inside of us, those dreams, those visions, we call them forth tonight. Those words, those prophetic utterances from men and women of God that spoke by the Spirit of God and they declared things upon us. We receive it and we say that it be so according to the word of the Lord. Those dreams, those things we have yet to see fulfilled that we know were promises of God. We say yes and amen tonight. If you're here, if there are dreams inside of you that have yet to be fulfilled and you know that it was from God, then I'm telling you right now, let the Spirit of God breathe life over that inside of you. No matter our age, no matter how young, no matter how old, we 
may be. Let the Spirit of God breathe life into you. And if you're here and you say, I believe I misstepped and I got out of the will of God back here and I did this and I did that. I'm telling you right now, it is God who realigns us. It is God who brings us into alignment. And you let the Spirit of God align you where you're supposed to be. Let destiny come forth inside of you. Let the wellspring of revival rise up inside of you. That river of life. Like the old song we used to sing, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Come on, let it come forth tonight. Call forth that river inside of you. It's time for the church of God. And I get I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking, I'm talking about even us just here. I'm talking about the kingdom of God to get excited again about the wonders of our God. It's time to get excited about the glory of God, about the revelation of, of who Jesus is. Because they that are lost in the darkness need to see the light of heaven. What most of us in this room have experienced in what we call salvation, where we were darkness and light came into us in the form of the Spirit of God. When we called out, forgive me for I am a sinner. And life came inside of us. Newness of life, restoration, let it grow inside of us and be released tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the Spirit of God, we receive the peace. We receive the I am of all I am. Father, we receive the Shekinah of the glory of God. We receive the Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sidkenu. Father, we receive, we receive the Olam El, the everlasting covenant keeping God. We receive every name that you are because you are a covenant keeping God. Yes. You don't turn your back on us, but even right now, you're our deliverer. You're our restorer. You're our healer. You're our coming king. You are you are everlasting father. You are our prince of peace. You are our lily of the valley. You are my bright and morning star. You are the bones of Sharon. You are the great I am who was wonderful counselor, the almighty God, the everlasting father. The one that the government of the world has put upon your shoulder. And the same one that by your stripes we are made whole. Yes. We are restored tonight. This is our meetings. This is our time. This is our destiny for life to rise up inside of us. Again. And excitement to be alive in the presence of God. Can you tell me what all is going wrong? Let me tell you what's going right. He's sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. He's on his throne until his enemies become his footstool. Yeah. He reigns king supreme eternal. And there is no one like unto our God. As the psalmist said, you can look at the heavens and there he is. You look at the earth below and there he is. And you cannot get away from the presence of God. And every knee is going to bow. And every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You come in this place tonight, and some of us, we, we've got family all twisted up and, and things of the world. They're calling themselves polymorphs, transgender, all sorts of names and things. And I was born this way. And alcoholics say I was born this way. And addicts say I was born this way. And I'm not going to argue with them. Because my Bible says you must be born again. You, I'll, I'll go with you. You were born a sinner just like I was. You were all doing different sins. And it's all sin unto God. But I'm telling you, when you come unto him and you call upon the blood of Jesus, he cleanses you, he purifies you, and he makes something amazing out of you. Come something new. You must be born again. But I was born with homosexual tendency, lesbian tendency. I was born a feminine. Okay, you must be born again. Yes. They try to tell us alcoholism is, is something that you're born with. They try to tell you that drug addiction is something you're born with. They try to tell you that sexual addiction is something you're born with. It's something that's in your DNA and your makeup. It's right. It's called sin. Amen. It's called sin. No matter what name you want to put on it, it's a sin. And we were all born into the nature of sin. But when we come to Jesus, we take on something new, a new nature, a new creation I am. Just like my brother, old things pass away and behold, all things become new. We go down an old man. He came up something new and amazing. He was born in the nature of sin. But now, through the blood of Jesus, through the, the salvation of the blood of the Lamb by his baptism, we, we're 
saying what's happening in the realm of the spirit is all things are washed away and I'm coming up something new and amazing in Christ Jesus. I am filled with the spirit of God. I am not who I once was, but I am bought by the blood of Jesus. Are we here tonight, church? Tell me, let's receive from the spirit of God right now. Yes. See, we used to sing the old song, Just As I Am. Without, what, one plea? But such as I am, here I come to thee, right? Isn't that, what the, isn't that more or less what the song was saying? Just as I am. Right. Without, I don't have a hope. I don't have anything without Jesus. Because right. he'll take you the way you are. You can't make yourself great before you come to Jesus. He takes you out of sin, and he's the one that makes something great out of you. Amen. It's not through your doing. It's by his doing. Amen. It's his love towards you long before your love toward him. In that while I was still yet a sinner, Christ came and he died for me. Before the foundations of the world, the lamb was slain. Yes. Are we here tonight? Tell the rest receive what we came here needing tonight. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. See, some of you in here, you may be experiencing something you've never experienced before, but you're feeling a stirring and a tugging in your heart. That's called the Holy Ghost. And you say, I don't even know if I died right now, if I would go into eternity, Brother Jason, in the presence of God. If you don't know, chances are you're not going into the presence of God. Yeah. But tonight we can know. Without a doubt, we can know. We can leave here and know. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am sanctified and set apart as holy unto God. Amen. Tonight can be our night. And there may be some of us here. You came in here and you say, I'm not even sure what that brother was doing over there. I've never been around some of that stuff before. Now this is one of those Pentecostal style churches. No, it's called to follow the Spirit of God and say where Amen. He takes us kind of a church. Yes, sir. Just don't label ourselves anything. Let's label ourselves as followers of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Are y'all here tonight? We love Jesus. Amen. I honor y'all. I bless you. And, and may the Lord Jesus equip us and teach us and, and do all sorts of things. If anybody here needs to be baptized, that water's still there. It's a little cold. He put his foot in his foot in his <laughs> But it's not in there as cold as it could be. If you need to be baptized, if you'll see Brother Gerald over there, we can sure make it happen. Is that right, Brother Gerald? Jesus. If you've got a Bible, would you turn to me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10? For those of us that like teaching, this is not our night. Because there's a fire stirred up inside of me. So let's go right here, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now I need you to understand something. Let's get something clear. In the body of Christ, he is the head authority, is he not? Yes. And in the church, he has appointed some to be apostles and prophets, elders, pastors, preachers, teachers. Is this true? Yes. They're called gifts to the body of Christ. You can go read in Ephesians. He gave gifts. And those gifts are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Yes. For what purpose? Till we all come to unity of faith. To equip us to grow into maturity is the purpose of the fivefold ministry. Can we agree on that? Yes. Yes. The purpose of the fivefold ministry is not to put myself in a higher position than somebody else. Yes. In the eyes of man. But in the eyes of what God is doing, there are realms of authority just like there is in a home. Are we here tonight? Yes. But now also understand this. But when Jesus sends people out and he tells them all authority and power in heaven and earth is mine, now go be a witness. He's not just equipping the apostles. He's not just equipping those that were disciples around him. He's equipping the body of Christ. Yes. And if you and I are part of that body of Christ, then he's speaking to us. Are you with me tonight? Yes. Then what did he command us to do? Go. And what are you going to do? You're going to preach the gospel. Then what are you going to do? You're going to lay hands on the sick. You're going to cleanse the lepers. You're going to cast out demons. 
You're going to raise the dead. Freely you have received. Freely you. Yeah. That's what we're called to do. Correct? Now let's read right here. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh. Do we walk in the flesh? Yes. You and I walk in a fleshly body. Do you have a fleshly body? Yes. If I punch you, is it going to hurt? Mm -hmm. Not near as bad as if you punch me. <laughs> hurts worse. The one that punched or the one that gets punched? Well, typically, look, I'm hurting worse if I got punched. <laughs> you don't hurt worse if you got punched. Because the one feeling the pain normally, if it's done right, is the one that got punched. Right? Right? Yeah, I don't know what my mama said. Mama didn't tell me the truth sometimes. <laughs> I'm not referring to that one. See, see that look I got over there? <laughs> That, that whole, it's going to hurt me worse than it does you, that's a bunch of fools. In my mind, he wants the one hurting, not hers. <laughs> now, on the inside, she might have been, but my honey was hurting. Hers, but I was the one crying a whole lot more than she was. Oh, I didn't. I didn't do anything needed a witness. He lied in church. <laughs> I did a whole lot more than I, that I needed a witness for than I did. <laughs> My sister got a whole lot more than I did because she was a whole lot worse than I was. <laughs> she's not here to defend herself. I hope she's not watching. I'll have a message on WhatsApp for it's over with. <laughs> but though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. And to all the veterans in the house, thank you for fighting for our nation. Thank you for what you did. But what this is referring to right here is not what happens in the natural or what happens in the realm of the spirit. Right. Let me tell you what, what's coming against your family. You're not going to fight it by the very words out of your mouth towards somebody. Before you ever fight it, you're going to have to fight it in the realm of the spirit called prayer. Before you ever tackle anything, you need to bathe it in prayer. You need to be equipped by the Spirit of God by prayer. Prayer is one of the most important things that as a Christian you can do. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? But it's one of the, these, the very things that we struggle with. But it's where your life comes from. Not just reading the Word of God, but praying to the one who wrote the Word of God. Amen. Are you here tonight, church? Yes, this is his spirit. It's alive inside this word right here. His spirit, his words are life unto us. They are breath to the very presence of us. But listen to me. Without the living word of life, breathing life inside of you is just another book. That's right, yeah. Until we become people that believe this and take this and, and, and use it and let it change us. And on the inside, it's just another book. And it sits there on so many, so many coffee tables and so many books and, and, and even in our phones. So many of those, our phones, we, we, we talk about, well, I don't take my Bible because I use my phone. Well, the only time you ever turn your app on is when you're at church. But you hide behind your phone or your tablet and you're telling me, well, I just use my tablet and my phone. But if I can look at the history on your phone, when's the last time you opened it? Sunday morning. Y'all got quiet on me. Verse 3, what does it say? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Verse 4. Come on, what's it right here? For the what? Weapons. Weapons, plural. Weapons, plural. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are what? The things that God has equipped you with is mighty in God. Now go be mighty in God. Quit being a weak need Christian out there begging for somebody else to help prompt you up and go out there and be the man and woman of God that God called you to be. Amen. Where's the equipping of the saints? And that's the point of the fivefold ministry. Is the equipping of the saints. Is the training of the saints. Not so they can be dependent upon pastors, but so they can go do the work of ministry. Come on. Yes. This should be a haven of hope up in here. This should not be a house just for salvation. Salvation should be happening out here and training should be happening in here. But somehow we've diverted this thing and now this has become the house of salvation. And I don't know where training happens unless it happens in the Sunday school rooms down the hall. 
because not this particular church, but in so many different churches, we have to preach things on tithing and giving because we're so far in debt, we can't even make it from week to week unless people are giving. We can't preach the fullness of the gospel because we might drive people away. It might offend them. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. If you are preaching the word of God, it's going to offend the flesh. If your flesh is not offended, you're not preaching the word of God. Because the word of God will cut the flesh. But the flesh needs cutting. And what we've got nowadays, if we even have a church inside most churches, we've got a baby church because everybody's offended in everybody. And the very fact that we get offended shows our immaturity. Right. We, we, we split churches over the color of carpet, over if we're going to have pews or chairs. We split churches over what the pastor wears or what he don't wear, what his wife does or don't do. If the music's too loud, it's too soft. If they play too much modern music, they don't play enough hymns. We split churches over things that do not matter. Come on. Yeah. You know, a lot of these songs that we sing, nowadays it just, whoo, I like that one. If it didn't get birthed in the presence of God, you don't need it. Amen. Right. Right. A lot of the stuff we're playing nowadays in our churches is just feel good music. It's yeah. got a good rhythm. It's got a good beat. And it gets people moving. It gets people in the house. But it is not anointed by God. Amen. We've got people on platforms that are not anointed by God. And they need to be sitting in a pew somewhere until they get anointed. I'd rather play three chords and be anointed by God than to be able to thrash up on that scale and make it sound amazing and have no presence of God. Because let me tell you what happens. When the Holy Ghost comes in a place, blinded eyes begin to open and nobody touched them. Right. It's called the power of the Holy Ghost. You know what the church needs today? It's the power of the Holy Ghost and not enough finesse. We need our light shows and our fog machines to not even come on anymore. We don't have to help out the Spirit of God. If He shows up, you're going to know it. Amen. And when we line up and we pray and you hit the ground, you better get up changed or you were in the flesh. Right. If you encounter God, you're going to change. Amen. Are y'all here tonight, church? Yes. For the weapons of my warfare, they are not what? They are not carnal, but my weapons are mighty through my God to do what? If we really believe that, I would not talk to you and you tell me what all you struggle with. Because when you tell me I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z, what you're telling me is it's a stronghold in my life, and I don't believe that right there. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? The weapons of my warfare are for what? Pull it down. Well, we're going to attack the principalities of this city. You better get your life right before you ever talk to that thing. Right. Let me say that again. There's been so many marriages split and ruined because people got foolish and they started attacking things they didn't have a clue about. Am I right or wrong, Brother Kelly? Right. How many years you pastored? Long time. How long have I been alive? How many years? I pastored about 26, 27. How long have you been preaching? 45. Longer than I've been alive. I'll be 44 in a few weeks. Longer than I've been alive since 1973, 74, somewhere near that brother's been preaching. Tell me I'm wrong. People attack things they should never put their mouth on. Because they didn't have their heart in order. They didn't have their home in order. And right. the enemy came in and attacked it and split it. And now they're. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. And what we do is we get in a prayer meeting or a meeting like this and we get all gung ho. And we go out there and we shake our fist at something that we're not ready to shake our fist at. And you're going to get your honey handed to you because you better get your own house in order before you go looking at somebody else's house. Before you start telling the preachers what all they got going wrong, what they need to be doing different, you better get your house in order. Amen. Our homes are so out of order in America, it is not even funny. We don't even know what authority is. We don't even know what a man's supposed to be in a home anymore. And we sure don't know what a woman's supposed to be in a home anymore. Uh -huh. yeah. And we all want to argue if they can speak in the church or not. Before we ever get here, you got to get your house in order. We got it all out of whack. We got kids leading our homes where the parents should be leading. We got kids telling parents what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. 
We got them showing us through 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 our iPads and our Kindles and all these other things. They are so far out there that parents don't even know what their kids are into. Right, yeah. Come on now. Man. See, my, my brothers are back here. These are my friends back here on these two rows. These are Teen Challenge guys that are, Jesus is setting us free, is he not? These are my brothers. We see each other every week. And we look at them and we say, oh, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, oh, oh, oh. Your kids are more bound to a tablet and a phone than they ever thought about being to drug and alcohol. Right. Come on. Yes, sir. Right. Right underneath your noses. Yeah, right. Because they don't even know how to cope in society without that thing. Right. Hmm. Neither do most of us in this room. Yeah. Wow. Come on. You take that phone away from you, you nut it up. You know how I know? Because the moment that thing crashes or it goes into water and it destroys it, I gotta go get another phone. <laughs> and now we're mad. Why? Because I lost all my contacts. <laughs> How can I live without my contacts? Not the things that go in your eyes. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong, church. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong when we have prayer meetings and we can't even stay focused on God because we're worried about if somebody liked our post or not. You take your self-worth out of something from somebody that won't even speak to you in public. Tell me I'm wrong. How many people in your friends list you see them at Walmart day? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. <laughs> when I see you in Walmart, you go the other way. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. How many people, you best friends on here, and when they get on there and say, pray for, oh, I'm on it, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, and when you see them in public, you're like, what was I supposed to be praying for? <laughs> oh, man. What's their name again? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hi, from why you looking it up? And I got a signal in here. <laughs> hey, how you how you doing? You doing good? So I gotta go. Tell me I'm wrong, church. Tell me I'm wrong. So many of us, our weapon is our phone. Because the moment you stump your toe, you call the pastor. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying? The moment something goes sideways in your life, <laughs> Sunday morning, I had a hard week. And this is where we have to go. Really, what we'll happened? And inside, we're going, oh, here we go again. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Oh, I'm going to be late again. Baby, go on home. I'm going to be late again. Because they stumped their toe again. <laughs> and something went sideways in their life. And they don't know how to get on their face before God. And wait until they get an answer. And what you know how to do is whine and complain and do sin. Because murmuring and complaining is sin before God. Yep. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are what? They are mighty through God. For what purpose? Pulling down strong holds. Now, I don't want you to raise your hand, but if we were honest in this room, you know how many of us struggle against strongholds? And we're doing it in the flesh and not by the weapons that God gave us. Yes. Yes. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Verse 6. <laughs> For those that didn't hear it, Thing said over here, I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. That's my own parents. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, it very much. He got his Bible my whole life. <laughs> my daddy carried it around an encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> that Bible's that thick. About that big. My whole life. About four months ago, he shows up for a meeting with that thing in his hand, and I just looked at it. <laughs> Where's that brown case at? Well, what is that? My Bible's on there. Do you know how to turn that thing on? <laughs> <Why does? laughs> now, uh, listen, I'm not against technology, but I am against technology ruining our lives that we yeah. don't want. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> this lady right here, I'm blessed that she's still with us. Lord willing, at 1201 tonight, she'll make 93. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she, her husband, she was a pastor's wife for how long were y'all married? He, I know he preached for 48 years. How many years were y'all married? Ooh. Do you remember now? Yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> Do you remember my 46. 46 years? We married in 46. Okay. <laughs> so they were married for 48 years. If my math is right. Yeah. Wow. He preached for 40, almost 50 years the gospel. An amazing woman. But you know what? Her time is coming at some point. Her breath will leave her body and her spirit will be in the presence of God. Amen. And now she will give account for what she did or did not do. Amen. Right. <laughs> So we. Yes, sir. We've got our scriptures that tell us how powerful we are in Jesus. But can I be honest with you? I get to travel all over the world, and listen, I'm not picking on the American church, but we are one of the most weak churches that I've ever been in Amen. as a whole. Again, I'm not talking about one individual church, I'm talking about as a whole. When I go into Asia, the first time I went into Asia to preach in an underground church, they told me, if you can't preach for two hours, do not come. And they don't mean two hours through the course of the day. They mean two hours. You take a 10-minute break, and you go again. And then you take an hour break for lunch, and you go again. And you take another 10-minute break, and you go again. That's what they mean. And see, you come back and you tell testimonies of miracles and manifestations of God and, and the amazing of who God is. And they go, how come more happens overseas than it does here? When we hunger and thirst, we'll be filled. Amen. To the level you hunger is the level you're filled. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? What we hunger for is what we get. What we thirst for is what we're filled with. And when we thirst for programs, when we thirst for buildings, when we thirst for just filling up a building with people, then that's what we're going to get. But when we hunger for the presence of God, that's what we're going to get. And we've got to be a church that hungers for presence more than we do for the accolades of man. Because the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God through the pulling down of comma. Next verse. Casting down what? Imagination. Depends on what version you got. Imaginations or arguments. arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Y'all, come on, church. Tell me there's not a whole lot out there right now exalting itself against the knowledge of our God. Yes. And then my Bible says my weapons are for pulling all of that stuff down. Yep. Amen. Come on. Right. Amen. Did you hear what I just read you? My Bible says the weapons that we have with us even right now by the Spirit of God are for pulling all that mess down. See that stuff you sit there and watch on, on all those TV programs and they get you all twisted on the inside because, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, if we don't win an election again, if we don't put this person in, if we don't do that, if you don't get on your face before God and cry out for mercy, it don't matter who you elect. Come on. Amen. They are men and they are women and they can be moved by the finger of God. Amen. Yes. yes, sir. It is God who moves the hearts of kings. Yes. Amen. I'm all for doing your part. Go, go voting for your elected. I, I'm, all, I'm, I'm all in. You'll see my signature. I'm in the country. You'll see my signature by my name. But that's not where it starts nor where it ends. 
It starts when I find out who's running. I'm in my prayer room praying for them. Come on. When they get elected, I'm back in my prayer room praying for them. Yes. It's not about color or creed or what they call themselves. My Bible says my God can turn their heart. Come on, Amen. Amen. Oh man, we 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 they go you so know, and so as so, so, this and that, and they got elected. I don't like what they stand for. You better get in the Word of God and get what God stands for, and start decreeing it and praying it over your nation. Come on, because my Bible says we can pull it down. Amen. Right. Well, if we get prayer back in school, the reason we lost prayer in schools because we lost it in our homes. Amen. 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 Can I just be real with you tonight? The reason the effeminate things are taking over your nation is because the men in the homes just were not there. Woo. Yes, and when women have to raise children by themselves over and over, you're going to get an effeminate nation. Because yep. men stepped out of our place. Because we were more worried about making money and losing our children. See, we can read all about Molech and all the gods of the Old Testament where they throw their children into a burning fire or a molten thing in their children. They listen to the screams of their children, but so are we today, and it's called we're losing them to money. Amen. So we can work more and buy a bigger bass boat and, and ski boat so we can spend more time with their children. That is not the truth. That's a cop-out and a lie Amen. for most people. We buy them their four-wheelers. We buy them their, their toys. We buy them this. We buy them that. And how many are we losing the drugs and the alcohol? How many, are, how many of them are losing their virginity before they even get into junior high? Come on, come on. Are you here, church? But my Bible says that the people of God, we have weapons for pulling that mess down. Amen. But it's got to start here. Amen. Before we ever pull that down, And everywhere I go, we got to have change. we got to have change. we got to have... It's got to start with me and you. Amen. Yes. I'm amazed. Everywhere you go, everybody agrees. Sin is not allowed in the presence of God. Everybody agrees with me. But nobody wants to admit I'm the one who's in sin. Right. Nobody wants to admit I'm the one that's having the adulterous thoughts. I'm the one that's full of anger. I'm the one full of pride. I'm the one full of bitterness. I'm the one that the word of God was talking about. And I call myself a follower of Christ. We want to quote these scriptures. But we can't get out of sin long enough to use the scriptures. Because how can you call on the power of God when you've got sin running and ripping in your life? We want to claim the promises and the blessings of God. But we don't get out of sin long enough to get into the blessings of God. See, we, we like to sing our songs about pulling the blessings down and how God's going to open up the heavens and rain some blessing on me. You need to go read Matthew chapter 5 to find out what the real blessings are. That's right. Blessed are ye when men persecute you and say, oh, man, you oh, against oh, you oh, for my name's sake. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. Yes. Blessed are the poor. In spirit. Y'all remember those? Yes. yes. Blessed. Y'all remember the whole beatitudes that we like to quote but don't want to live it because it cost us so much? What we want is we want to come in here and have a Holy Ghost filled meeting and leave out of here drunker than Cooter Brown in the veins of the Holy Ghost. Woo! I can't wait for next service. But you didn't do anything with the last service. So why can you expect more? <laughs> We're going to have a party. What kind of party are you going to have? To celebrate people going to hell party? Are we going to have a what? What kind of party are we going to have? Why don't we have a party of coming in here? getting excited about what we're going to go out there and do. And the next time we come together, we tell what we did out there, and then we celebrate it, and God fills us again to go do more. Yeah. The whole reason the book of Acts happened was because the Holy Ghost fell. Can we agree? Yeah. It was the acts of the apostles. It was the acts of the disciples and what they did. But it all happened when the Holy Ghost came on them right. to be a witness. They had amazing, certainly they had amazing times, but it was all so they could go be a witness. Verse 5, casting down arguments or imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing, bringing, see, we don't want to read these verses right here. I just can't control my mind. Go read your Bible and get born again. Amen. Come on. Bringing what? 
what? Captivity. What? Captivity. What are you going to bring into captivity? Every. Every. How can you bring every thought into captivity and obedience when you just got watch, got through watching Freddy Krueger annihilate somebody? But I like horror films. You need to get born again. <laughs> I like Harry Potter. You realize that you celebrate the enemy of my God called witchcraft? Yeah. That's right. Come on now. <clears throat> Witchcraft is an abomination before God. Yes. yes. Period. Mm -hmm. But we celebrate. No, we don't. The Christians do. Or they wouldn't have so much money in the movies they make, in the books they write, because they sit on our shelves. I've been in so many homes. And if I get a chance to go into a home, you've got to know I'm looking at that DVD collection if I get a chance. Because when I see it, I know exactly where they are. If I can see your music, I know exactly where you are. If I can see what you read, I know exactly where you are. Don't tell me how much you pray and you've got a life full of tainted of sin by what's going in your eyes. And what's hitting your heart? Because the eyes are the gateway to your heart, are they not? And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what you watch is what you become. What you look at is what you will become. Look, how many of us ever, have you ever been driving down the road and you're like, man, I like that truck. <laughs> what did it do inside of you? You may not have ended up with that one, but something started growing in there. A desire for something else other than what you Tell me it's not true. We can have an amazing place like this, and we can go to another meeting somewhere else, and we walk in their place, and wow, this is neat. We need this. Wow. Wow, this is really modern. We need this. And then you come back over here, and you're no longer satisfied with what we've got because we've seen somebody else had something else, and now we're jealous of what they have and what we don't have. Well, it, I'm not trying to call you out, brother, but how old are you, 77? Absolutely. And proud of it. Every day of it, you celebrate it. Listen to me. And what we do in our culture is, well, that brother, what we need is somebody younger. What we need is, what we need is somebody that, that, that talks a little different. What we need is we need this. What you need to do is hush and follow the Holy Ghost. For those that didn't catch that, what you got to do is shut up <laughs> and follow the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You think your opinion matters. Your opinion does not matter. <coughs> Neither does mine. The only opinion that matters is God said. Amen. Amen. Right. And my, my brother, I pray you continue until the day God says enough. Amen. Whatever that may be, I pray you go with every fiber of your being and the Lord sustains you until he says, well done. Amen. Well, what he needs and what you need to do is do the will of God for you and us worried about him. Amen. Yes, sir. What you need to be worried about is the weapons that God gave you and start pulling down the strongholds in your own life. Do y'all remember in Ephesians chapter 6, there in verse 16, it talks about the shield of faith. What's, it, what's the purpose of the shield of faith? To quench what? All. All. How many of us are under attack right now? Well, I know it's a trick question. I know who's talking. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to wait and see if he does it. And I'm going to see what he says to him before I admit it. How many of us are under attack? Pretty much everybody in this room, right? But what does the Bible tell us? The shield of faith is for putting out. Putting out the attack. Putting out. Quenching. Every fight. What does quench mean? I preached it somewhere else the other night about this part, just this right here about the shield of faith. 
And he came to me again today and to talk about this just for a moment. The shield of faith. you got to stand in faith and put out what the enemy is attacking you against. What he's throwing at you, put it out. Stop playing with it and put it out. What does fire do? Most of us that grew up down here in the south was told by our mamas and grandmamas if you played in the fire, you was going to you going to teach you in the bed at night. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Yeah. Y'all remember that? Well, at Mamaw's house, it was Laura's house. Y'all know who Laura's house was? That was like the, 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 the place of correction at her house. Thank God I never saw it. I got threatened by it a few times. Had some cousins that saw it, but I never saw Laura's house. But listen, we've been told all sorts of things, and as a kid, we believed it. And when we were doing the things of God, we believed. Right. Until we got around somebody that said, hey, man, you need to calm down a little bit. Don't be so radical about Jesus. Come on. Come on. Just, just come on, man. calm down. And all the rest of the sheep said, hey, you're making us look bad. Calm down, dude. Calm down, calm down. Because what happens when, when, when a sheep gets all excited, he starts making all kinds of noise. Everybody starts looking at him like, what do you think you're doing? Y'all just wait long enough. He'll calm back down and be like the rest of us. Do you know how many of us that call ourselves sheep are really wolves headed to hell? Because we put on a coat that looked like a sheep for a while. We bagged for a little while, but we still just kept on our journey to hell, calling us ourselves saved and calling ourselves a Christian, but we never changed on the inside. Listen to me. Don't you ever let a man tell you you got saved. Don't you ever let anybody tell you you got saved. If you don't have that inner witness inside of you called the Spirit of God, you didn't get born again. If you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, my Bible says he's the guarantee of what's to come. And if he is not changing you on the inside, you did not get born again. You better cry out for mercy. Amen. Oh, let's finish this. 2 Peter chapter 1. Real quick. 2 Peter chapter 1. Y'all okay tonight? Yep, man. Do we still love Jesus? Amen. I didn't ask if you still love me yet. Let's get through before we get there. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and let your offense go. It's all right. Just let it go. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. As his divine Power. Who's divine power? Yes. God's. Who's, whose power are we talking about? God. As his divine power has given to. Does your Bible say us? If you don't think it does, hold it a little bit further. Let your eyes focus and tell me if it says us. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's have fun. Let's, let's be serious. What is his divine power? He's given to us. What? See, when I was a kid, there was a commercial, A-L-L. Y'all remember that? Laundry. <laughs> and what did it take out? All stains. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Some of them in here, y'all too old to remember, or you're too young. To <laughs> <laughs> what is he giving unto us? All, what? His divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Ain't no man called you. The glory of God called you. And the virtue of God called you. Right. The next verse says, verse 4, by which, which, by which have been given to us, to us, has been given to, to me and you, correct, exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these promises... You may be partakers of what? You may be partakers of what? The divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. God is calling us to walk into the divineness of who he is. Yes. The majesty of, who, of what we worship is what he wants us to walk in. It becomes part of who we are. Yes. Well, when I get to heaven, no, 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 no. I understand there's a whole lot that's going to happen that we have no clue about. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not waiting till I get to heaven to walk in some of this stuff that's mine to walk in now. 
Amen. Yeah, there's a whole lot more there, sure. Absolutely. There's a, I believe there's a whole lot that we don't even know about. Amen. That wasn't written down because it didn't, didn't even necessary for us to know. But you know what? There's a whole lot more that is for us to walk in. But you and I got to get out of ourselves and get into his nature. Get out of our nature and get in his nature. Get out of my desire and get in his desire. And step into the promises, step into the divineness of who he is, and allow God to work in me. And when I am cleansed and I am made whole, and I become part of who he's called me to be, I take up those weapons of warfare, and I begin to fight, and I begin to break down the enemy. Yes. Amen. But you tell me, this is what you Americans want to tell me, because I have yet to hear this overseas. Americans tell me, New levels, new devils. I'm going to look at you and tell you new levels, more grace and mercy. Not wrong. More authority, more power, more as you step into it. Yes. I am not concerned about a devil and what he's doing. Right. Let's don't give him that much credit. Right. Yes, right. he knows what he's doing and he's roaming around trying to destroy us, but let's get in God who will expose him. Right here. Let's get in the anointing of God, in the will of God, and he will expose the enemy and what he's doing. Right. He will expose the hearts of men around you for what they really are. The ones that are trying to deceive us, that so many of us, and can I just be real with you? So many of us were duped by people of religion, people of church, because we took our eyes off of Jesus and we put them on man. And if we'd been listening to Jesus, we would have seen it long before he got us. Amen. Amen. We're so offended at people because we took our eyes off of Jesus. Amen. And people hurt us. Amen. <clears throat> exactly. But like, if you and I were hanging sheet rock for any amount of time, and I'm hoping that. Sheet rock now, we're not using screws, we're using nails. Will you eventually get my phone? It probably won't take long, will it? But it probably wouldn't take long. Especially as the day went on and the tire that we got. I can tell you right now, a man that hit his own finger sure hit somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> my dad told me that all my whole life. And I've seen him miss the nail and I believe it. <laughs> oh, I don't hold a nail. Except for my own self, because I'm liable to hit my own self. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you know how easily I can offend my own self, much less you? Right. You know how easy it is to fall short? And you know how easy it is when we start looking at man and we start comparing ourselves to man, we're surely going to fall. That's why every day you set your eyes on Jesus and you look at nothing else but Jesus. When it comes to the things of the Spirit, when it comes to calling down strongholds and powers and things, you follow the Spirit of God and He will lead you. And everybody's worried about the retaliation. Well, the devil's after me because of what we've been doing. Why do we give Him so much glory? Why don't we just get in Jesus and let God fight our battles? Amen. When Jehoshaphat put the worshipers in the front, was he worried about the retaliation of the enemy? There was no retaliation because it was divided and it was conquered. But when you go and you do something for God, you start looking for retaliation from the enemy. Stop! And give God glory and let him fight it all for you. And you go and you continue to take the land. Amen. Stop giving him that much glory. Yes. Why do you want to take something and then stop? When you get an army moving, you got to keep advancing. But what we want to do is stop it. Well, the enemy's coming at us now. You know, we just got back from such and such. And, and you know, the enemy's going to come and attack us. Go ahead and speak that on yourself. That's right. But as for me and my house, we are blessed by the Most High God. But as for me and my house, the Holy Spirit watches over us to perform His Word. But as for me and my house, we walk in hell. But as for me and my house, are you following me? Those promises, they're ours. Amen. Are you here tonight? Come on. Would you stand on your feet, please? Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. What we need is the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Is this true? Amen. Yes. Do you
you here tonight? We need more. No matter what we've been walking in, we need the more. We need to walk in the more. And I understand when you have the Holy Spirit, you have the more. But I understand this. There's so much that we're not walking in. That's ours. It's our promises. It's, it's given it to us by God to walk in it, to see it fulfilled. It's ours to pull down. And I'm telling you right now, I want you to identify in your own life. I want you to ask God right now where you stand. Father, what is it? And most of us already know. Things in our lives that have been strongholds around us in our family for generations. And I want you to take the word of God and I want you to proclaim those strongholds coming down tonight. By the power of the Spirit of God, by the blood of Jesus. Are you with me? The weapons are of our warfare, they are mighty through our God for pulling down a stronghold. And what else? To pull all of our thoughts into captivity. So those things that have been struggling with you, you've allowed it to, to rule you. You've allowed it to, to take over you. You've allowed offense. You've allowed a whole lot of things, angers and bitterness and resentment, to come up inside of you. Somebody stole something from you and you're still mad at them. Somebody offended. Come on, right now. Just start tearing it down in your own life. Just tell Jesus, Jesus, I let it go and I forgive and I tear down. We take the, the weapons of all warfare that are mighty through God. And we start tearing it down. Father, we even right now, we start tearing down. And we remember the blood of the Lamb. We remember by whom we are saved. The one who was crucified and risen again. Our life coming from the throne of God right now. That we leave out of this place with weapons in our hand. Not a ragtag group of Christians. But we are men and women who square our shoulders. Who set our knees and set our face before God. And we are men of righteousness. We are women of truth and women of valor. We are men and women who see the things of God accomplished upon this earth through us. We are people who know our God and do mighty exploits for our God. No matter if we, we've been struggling with this or that in the past, right now we let that go and we ask God for help and we allow the Holy Ghost to rise up inside of us. Are you here, church? But if you're here, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Most of us, I don't, before this week, I didn't know a whole lot of us. And I don't know some of you in here tonight. I don't know where you are with Jesus. But I'm not going to let this meeting get by us without giving the opportunity to be introduced to the one who saves us. To be introduced to the one who rescues and makes us born again. The one that makes all things new. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you're living in a backslidden state, you've allowed things to take you out of your place in the kingdom, and you won't back in. Would you come up here with me tonight? Come stand up here with me, and let's meet Jesus. And let's allow Jesus to come in and to refresh us. Let's let Jesus change us on the inside. If you say, I'm all in. Tonight's my night. I'm all in. I want all in for Jesus. I've been playing defense. I've been playing games with God. And I want all in. This is your time right now. Your chance. I'm telling you. Don't miss what God has for you. I'm not going to beg you. I'm just, I am giving you opportunity. It's your choice. It's your decision. Now. If you're here and you say, man, I've been struggling with this. And I want to walk in authority. I want to walk in dominion. But I've allowed things to take me out of my place. And I want to be restored. And I want life everlasting. Would you come up here with me right now? I want to get in a place on the field of battle. And I want to walk. I want to be. I want to do. I want to be the man that God called me. I want to be the woman. I want to walk in the weapons of my world. I want to walk in authority and power. I am tired of letting the devil take his way with me. Would you come up here and line up here with me. And let's allow the authority of the Lord Jesus to wash over us. Let's allow the presence of God. Jesus. 